Today, I'm going to be opening my playbook with you. I'm going to be sharing the tools and quotes and patterns necessary to grow into a godlike character, as James Allen calls it. Let's go ahead and dive into my notebook now. Before I go into all the nuts and bolts of Wiseman coaching, I need to tell you my story. So initially, it, when I was 18 years old, I turned my life over to the Lord. I had a little inkling in, of a whispering of a still small voice that suggested to me that the Lord could make more of my life than I could. Actually, a prophet leader shared that quote with me. But when I heard that quote, that still small voice I referenced said to me, why don't you let the Lord Lord, turn your life over to the Lord and let him see what he can do with you. And my heart cried out in a Yoda-like voice, let him, I will. And I gave my life over to the Lord. Now fast forward from age 18 to 26, I did a lot of great things, including the outer Mongolia for a couple of years, going to college, and then got my associate's degree. And I had a nervous breakdown. I was engaged, had the nice car, had the fit body, thought I had it all, thought I was invincible, but the Lord had more in store for me than I knew. And my world was turned upside down. My, I faced my greatest fear of being diagnosed with mental illness. And for the next 20 years of 23 years to be more precise, I fluctuated and struggled with weight loss because I thought as a medicine, the side effect of medicine I was on that caused me to sleep longer and it caused me to eat more than I should. And it was all the medicine's fault, so to speak. So I justified uh, in my mind's eye that I needed to be on the, I needed to be on the medicine. And if I was on the medicine, I had to be heavy and I couldn't have both. I tried getting off the medicine two or three times and each time led to a relapse and I lost the weight, but it led me to a relapse of another nervous breakdown. So I've, I've been hospitalized three times, at least three times under court order to get my act together and get back on the medicine. And I'm happy to report that I am breaking a limiting belief this just this year that has enabled me to trim down and be on that medicine. And it is the stimulus that started Wiseman Coaching. So around March of this year, 2023, I started a podcast. It was my third or fourth attempt at doing a podcast on a regular basis. Russell Brunson challenges people to do a, find your, your way of giving creatively and do it on a daily basis. And I'd done it two or three times over the past three years and I just didn't finish it. I did it for the best I think I did was like 30 days and I just ran out of steam, changed directions, whatever it was. But in March of this last year, I I started a podcast called Jesus is the Mark, where I suggested that, that putting Jesus as the focal point of your life enables him to change every area of your life. And on May 13th, after doing that consistently for uh, you know a, a month or two, the idea was presented to me that if I wanted to change my physique, I could because I was turning everything to the Lord and allowing him to change me, which reminds me of C.S. Lewis quote, where he says that the savior came into this man's house who had a cottage and he stopped, fixed the cottage up and the man's like, oh, this is cool. I mean, getting a better cottage. But then he knocks out a wall here and a wall there to make a mansion out of the place. Well, I'd like to refer to that more as a temple as our body is a temple. And when you turn your your life over to the Lord, he enables you to change your physique and enhance your physique so that you can represent him more clearly by a temple that it, that allows his light to shine. And where does the light shine? It shines for the eyes. And that is the window to the soul, some people say. And when your eye is single to the glory of God, he fills you with more and more light and he allows you to be a light on the hill, the salt of the earth, so that others may know him by knowing you. So as I turn my life over to Lord and had that idea presented to me on May 13th of this last year. Since then, I've trimmed down about 40 pounds and I, I marvel, I absolutely marvel at the power of God to help heal our bodies and the resilience of our bodies when we turn and give it all to him. Again, I thought at age 18, I'd done that. Then I hit this trial of my faith for 23 years of the mental illness trial of ups and downs, left and rights, medicine, no medicine, hospitalization, hospital, no hospitalization. And it's all come to fruition. It all makes sense now. And I'm filled, filled, filled with gratitude for those experiences 
because they led me to sharing what I have learned through Wise Men Coaching to help you raise the bar, to serve as a catalyst, to help you not take 23 years to put your life in order. To wherever you may be, whatever age you may be, you could turn your life over to the Lord and he can change you from the inside out. It's going to take plodding along. It's going to take rigor, but you can do it. You can change. You are accountable for you and only you. Take ownership and I promise you, you're going to have results that change. And so without further ado, uh, here's more of the breakdown on Wise Men Coaching. First thing I'd like to draw to your attention is Aesop's Fable. I was listening to Dave Ramsey's book called Millionaire Baby Steps, something to that effect. And he tells a story of a billionaire who on an annual basis, or if not more often, reads Aesop's fable of the hare and the tortoise, or the tortoise and the hare, to his employees, to his family, etc. And he really emphasizes the power of this parable. I'd like to dive into that. So there's a hare and a tortoise, and you know the story. The hare races ahead, he has more talent, more ability, more speed, he races ahead, gets tired, takes a nap, and the tortoise who plods along wins the race because he consistently, day in and day out, did the work. And the process of growing into a godlike character is the day-to-day -day plod through with rigor and with consistency in developing godlike thoughts. So having said that, let's dive into this first quote that I have listed here. This is by James Allen in his book called As a Man Thinketh, chapter one, verse four. I say verse four because I've numbered his books as I read them for easy reference. So he said, a noble and godlike character is not a thing of favor or chance, but it is a natural result of the continued effort in right thinking, the effect of long cherished association with godlike thoughts and ignoble and bestial character by the same process is the result of continued harboring of groveling thoughts. I love that quote because it's teaching us that if we want to have a noble and godlike character, we need to start with our thoughts and put our thoughts in order with God. But Isaiah tells us that our thoughts are not his God's thoughts and our ways are not God's ways. Nevertheless, God provided a plan for our thoughts to be lifted to his. And today we're going to talk about that process and we're going to go through the nuts and bolts of how to develop this godlike character through wise men coaching. Let's go to the next section. So James Allen also teaches, men do not attract that which they want, but that which they are. So the whole premise, the whole idea behind transitioning from where you are to where you want to be is to become who you want to be, to get what you want to get. So let's look at this from a point A to point B. A is where you are or have been, and this is, you have a body that's not reflecting the ideal that you want. And you want to get to the ideal physique. You want to get to a godlike character, as James Allen noted in a previous quote. But you're also, you could be stuck in your, in your head with these great ideas, but there's little action. You may think, oh, my book, my podcast, my YouTube channel my yada, 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 yada. But if they're not creating and writing on a daily basis, if you're not plodding along daily with giving and sharing your talents, then you're holding yourself back. It's easy to talk about it, but to do it is also easy when you rely on God's power. So on that note, I got to put a plug in and debunk the idea of willpower. I've seen a lot of comments made saying something to the effect, just go to the gym, just start eating this way, just start doing this, just start doing that. And it's all has to do with the arm of the flesh, willpower. Willpower your way to change to your ideal physique. That is wonderful, it may work for some people, but at the end of the day, our human physique doesn't cut the cheese, doesn't get things done, it can't endure forever. It comes to an end, it will die, and you will have it no more. But our inner man, our inner thoughts, our inner being of who we are inside lasts forever. You are an eternal being and you need to change from the inside out. It's not a matter of just willpowering things through to plod away with rigor. It is a matter of purifying your thoughts and turning your thoughts to God so that he can enhance them and give you his power 
to become more so he can give you all that he has. So we'll continue here. It's a lot of people, they may have the form of godliness, meaning they may have the fruits of success. They have the things, the houses, the cars, the friends, the fame, the power, uh, all worldly power, things that are accumulated by the strength of the arm, by living correct principles to get the thing. They are essentially, they are essentially reflecting good. So you see the things that they have, and that's not to be confused with by their fruits, you shall know them. Fruits that we're talking about are fruits of the Spirit of God, peace, love, joy, enduring happiness, rejoicing and always rejoicing, being full of love, long suffering, etc. Whereas having a bunch of things may be cool and everything, but it's not going to do a whole hill of beans for you when it comes to your deathbed and you leave this world empty as you were born into this world naked. So those wonderful things are good and they can be a source of helping and serving other people. But if that's your sole purpose, then please don't carry on with this video. This is not for you. This video is for those who want to develop a godlike character, who wants to put the effort and work in to changing who you are, to move from a bestial mentality of the pleasures of the flesh and getting the next thing, moving into a godlike character where they give their resources, they give freely, they're free with their substance to lift and inspire mankind by sharing their talents and exchanging their talents to lift their brothers and sisters so that we can all have harmony and peace and prosperity. So let's dive into this last point here. A lot of people in this state of, of being where they're at get stuck in their what's in it for me syndrome. What's in it for me? And that is very much a self mentality or an outer reflection, or I've put here a moon versus the sun. Let me dive into what those are. So James Allen, he teaches that the polar opposite of truth is self. I always thought the polar opposite of truth was error, but he suggests that it's self. In other words, you're being selfish. You're in this, what is it for me mentality, rather than having an eye single to God or truth and living correct principles to develop and become like him, to develop God-like character as James Allen calls it. So the and Paul in the New Testament talks about three different degrees of glory. One of the stars, one of the moon, and one of the sun. And I'm going to talk about the two, the moon and the sun. Good and honorable men of the earth, they do good things. They make, they have libraries with their names on them. They have mansions. They have uh, factories and different modes of serving people by providing, I'm referencing Andrew Carnegie and um, other, other leaders in the past who make oil affordable, who make steel affordable, who make vehicles affordable, and they offer a great service to mankind. But at the end of the day, they have a library with their name on it, or a car with their name on it, or some other means of with their name on it, which is, which is a great thing. But we're not talking about being a good and honorable man of the earth. We're talking about raising things to the next level to have a godlike character, one who gives and has an eye single to God to lift mankind. So that mentality of getting, doing, living correct principles to get the next thing is very much a good and honorable man of the thing. Again, I'm not talking to those people. I'm talking to people who deep down inside, they feel like, man, there's something more to life than getting the next thing. There's something more to life then eat, drink, and be merry. There's something more to life. There's a greater purpose, a greater intention for me in this school of life to develop and grow as Christ taught to become one with God. Those are the people I'm speaking to. And if that's you, please, please carry on, carry on with this, this important not message, message, but my outline and my framework here of wise men coaching, where I show you I'm giving it all away here. So again, turning back to the moon versus the sun. So the moon, where does, how does the moon get its shine and its luster for the earth so that we can see at night? It is a reflection of the sun. The sun is the source of light. It radiates light. Now, do you want to be a good and honorable man of the earth who reflects light by having the shiny objects? Or do you want to be at the core, someone who radiates light, someone who's a light on a hill, 
who changes people's lives so that when they know you, they know who God is because you have turned your life to God and you serve and you give your talents to lift and inspire other people. That is what it is to be a son, a higher glory living higher laws, living such laws as what Jesus Christ taught, not to avoid adultery, but to avoid lusting for a woman, to avoid by having pure thoughts and not committing adultery in your mind. This is the higher law that we're talking about, living and raising your thought level so that you are not groveling, as James Allen says here. So you're not groveling, having harboring and the groveling thoughts and the bestial character, an ignoble and bestial character. This, this, this isn't for you and I. This is for those sons. And I say sons because I'm talking to entrepreneurial dads, those that want to change their lives, their families' lives, their communities' lives, and the world to live in harmony with higher laws so that you can not just reflect the sun like the moon, but you can be a source of the sun in giving love and light and beauty to the world. So essentially what we're talking about here is moving from this point A of this bestial character sort of like, uh, where you're not reflect, your ideal body's not being reflected, etc. And you're, we want to bridge this gap and move over here to this godlike character. And to do that, there are four steps or four questions that we're going to discuss. But before I dive into those, these four questions and this framework that's going to get you from point A to point B is through questions. And the I love this little phrase here that I put together. Inquiry is the father of revelation. What do I mean by that? When you ask, you can receive, but you've got to first ask and you've got to be inspired first to ask the right questions. So we're going to talk about four questions that are the framework of wise men coaching to help move you from point A to point B. But before I can go into that, I must say, what is the shortest distance between point A and point B? It is mental exertion. And we're going to put it here as a line, a box between A and B. We're going to call that mental exertion, or in other words, a Christ consciousness, as some authors call it. And this is the fastest way to get from point A to point B is to have this mental shift, mental paradigm shift, as Stephen Covey calls it, having, or as Viktor Frankl calls, there's a space between stimulus and response. And in that space is our mental exertion. And if our thoughts are groveling and bestial, then the mental exertion is low, slothful, lazy, etc. But if our, our thoughts are higher thoughts, more divine thoughts, pure thoughts, virtuous thoughts, then they are full of action, life, plotting, and rigor. And if that is the case, then you're going to have the fastest movement from point A to point B. The four questions are, start with what, why, how, and what to become. So as you go throughout life, you're going to see someone who inspires you, someone who's reached down and lifted you. Think for a moment, who has helped you? I recall in my youth, someone doing kind things to me. And I used to think to myself, because I was raised in a situation where my environment, I was abused in many different ways. This isn't a victim mentality here. This is stating the facts. I could have been better. I could have worked harder. Yes, it takes two to tango. But the point is, is that when someone did something nice to me, I thought to myself, they must want something out of me rather than seeing them for their genuine kindness. So it got me to the point of asking, why are you doing this? And again, the key is inquiry is the father of revelation. When I would ask and they would tell me why, I would be baffled. My mind would be blown when they say, because of, because of my master, Jesus Christ, or something of that nature. Because I want to, because I love helping people, because I love serving. And eventually, I, with the right questions, I got to asking the next question. So I asked, what did they do? I observed that and I inquired after that. Why did you do that? And then they would not only tell me why, but the next question is, how did they do that? And then they tell me how. And because of this what, why, and how, I now know what I need to become, what I need to become. Because again, as James Allen teaches right here, men do not attract which, that which they want, but that which they are. In order to get to this point B 
section, you've got to become more than you are on your own. And I'm not talking about willpower again. I'm not talking about the strength of your arm. I'm talking about turning your life over to the Lord and allowing him to lift you to higher ground, allowing him to make more of your life than you can on your own. And when you do that, you exercise this mental exertion and it catapults you to the next level. It catapults you to a level of being more than you can on your own. And to exemplify this, I'm gonna turn here to this example here that I've outlined. So to this godlike character, you're going to, through, through living these correct principles of finding someone, finding someone who inspires you, a mentor, a neighbor, a friend, a coach, whatever it may be, find that person and ask them these questions. Why did you do that? How did you do that? What do you need to do become to be able to give that to other people? And as you make these discussions, discoveries, you begin to develop a godlike character and you also begin to develop an ideal physique. And that starts with your inner core. You have to purify your thoughts and your words and your deeds. And when you do that from the inside out, your outside body begins to take form and is a reflection of what you're thinking. And when you're thinking pure thoughts and virtuous thoughts, you're going to want pure virtuous food in your body. Kind of like having a race car. If you have a race car and put a bunch of rubbish in the car, it's not going to go anywhere. It's going to put real quick. Or if you put some regular gasoline in it, it's not going to keep up with the Joneses of the, the race car next door that's have high octane alcohol in its engine. Likewise, in our bodies, if we want to perform at a higher elite level, I'm not talking about being an elite athlete. I'm talking about being one who radiates the sun, who radiates good goodness, then we need to watch our thoughts, our words, our deeds, what we allow into our body and what we allow out of our body. So as you're doing that, you're going to develop an ideal physique and you begin to doing, you begin doing the work, you begin creating, you begin plodding along, giving of your resources and time to other people so that they can be lifted to a new level. And the beautiful thing is, is when you give, you receive kind of like 1 John 4, 19, God first loved us and we love him. Or how is this phrase there? We love him because he first loved us. And as we continue to give people they exchange talents with us. When you give, 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 you receive, receive, you receive. It's one reason why it's noted in scripture that, that often we are unprofitable servants because the moment we give through obedience and living these higher laws, God pours more blessings upon us. And then we're still indebted to him because he gives us way more than what we've done. We are obey obedient to the small things and he gives us the small things and greater things like the parable of the talents. So again, as we continue to tap into God's power by living these correct principles that enables him to bless you more, including giving you his power and giving his strength and enabling you to do more than you can on your own. And this example is perfect perfectly explained. Uh, there's a gentleman named Stephen Robinson in the 1990s wrote a book called Believing Christ. And that's kind of where I got these ideas from. So if you have this symbol here, which is infinity, and you take it plus or minus any number, let's say the number is one, what do you get? You get, you get infinity. Infinity plus or minus one plus or minus a million gives you infinity. So let's break this equation down. Infinity is representation of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is infinite power. Jesus Christ enables you and I to tap into his power so that we have access to infinite power as well. But how do you do that? The answer is through a yoke. So I'll draw this yoke here and it's rudimentary, but I think you get the idea. And in this book, he explains that when you take two, two oxen and one of them is trained and one of them is not trained, that the untrained oxen will pull equally and learn how to pull equally together because they're in a yoke. Whereas if you have two that are not trained properly, they're all over the place and won't pull. Or if you have two that are trained, one trained different than the other one, then they may not pull even. But if one is trained and the other is untrained, it will pull equally with the trained one. And that is a representation of Jesus Christ in you. If you're plus or one, plus one, minus one, wherever you are, when you take the yoke of Christ upon you, he makes things easy and he 
gives you rest and he gives you, it's not just you're tying up to his yoke so you can take a nap, rest. No, you're tying into his yoke so he can feed you light and truth and lift your understanding, which I'll come back to this drawing here in a moment. And But before we do that, we got to talk about edify and rejoice. So if you have a 60 watt light bulb like I have here, and, and what is the word, I'm talking about what the word edify is. And if you have a 60 watt bulb that's edified, it's the same bulb, but it becomes essentially a 100 watt bulb. It's brighter, it shines brighter, and it's full of more light. Likewise, when you take on the yoke of Christ here, you get access to his power and he enables you to become infinite like he is and to become perfected in him so that you can be one with God. So that you can, at the end of the day, be a light on the hill and point others to God because you have turned to God and you've given your whole heart, mind, and soul to him. And in so doing, you develop a godlike character because you're plotting away, you're doing what you're supposed to, and living a higher law. So in conclusion, let's dive into this last final quote here from James Allen. Again, this is from As Men Thinketh as well. It's called, if, if you don't notice, haven't noticed, he's my favorite author. Um, and his most popular, most famous book is called As Men Thinketh, which I've given the references today. The quotes I've shared from him or from that book. And it, he said, by pursuing this process, such as a wise man coaching process, a man sooner or later discovers that he is the master gardener of his soul, the director of his life. Within himself, thought forces, mind elements, and mind elements operate in the shaping of his character, circumstances, and destiny. You are the master of your ship. Take accountability of your thoughts. Take accountability of your words. In James of, of the New Testament, he tells, he that offendeth not in word is a perfect man. Perfection is possible. I'm not talking about perfectionism. Get that out of here. I'm talking about being perfect in living what you know to be true so that you can be given more and grow perfection upon perfection and grow into a godly character so that you can have an ideal physique. And in that ideal physique, you can run faster and run and not be weary and walk and not faint and have greater energy and focus and service orientation to lift because he who is the greatest is the servant of all. He is free with his substance so that he can lift all. And a final note on this is if how can we have a place on earth where there's no poor among us if everyone's poor? That's not how it works. When you have been given much is required of you, you give more and you help lift others to higher, newer levels because you've been free with your substance. And in exchange, as I mentioned earlier, God gives you more. And all he asks is you sacrifice your fleshy arm, your bestial character, and yield to the enticings of the Holy Spirit, God's mind, and live this higher law. And when you do that, he gives you at the end all that he has. And as one, a prophet leader in my life put it this way, sacrifice in the end is no sacrifice at all. Why? Because all you're giving up is the natural carnal man, his pleasures, the the physical sensations and magnifying those versus allowing your spirit to control your body and to enable you to think higher thoughts, be higher and be virtuous so that you can help change the world. But it starts with you. You are the only one who can change you. And when you turn your life over to God, Jesus Christ, when you're humble and ask for his help, he will lift you. He will enable you through his grace to be perfected in him. So again, this this wise men coaching is for those who are seeking a, to develop a godlike character, those who are seeking to get their physique in order so that they can run and not be weary. And if you struggle and if, if you've made poor choices in the past, that's okay. Move forward and embrace further light and truth so you've been given more, given all that he has. But it starts with you. You are the only one who can change you. So having said all of that, I invite you to scroll down to the bottom here and go ahead and book a call with me at the links down below and we'll go over your point A of where you are to where you want to be and bridge the gap through Wise Men Coaching and I promise to give you value, to give you resources, to give you at least material through that book's call. If there's a match, 
and you and I, we connect at a deeper level and you want to work on a personal level with me, then I would make an offer as a win-win offer to work with you on a personal one-on-one -on -one basis. And you can book that call with me again, down here at the bottom. If not, go ahead and give me a direct message on Instagram. And the link is down there below as well. Thank you for your attention and God bless you in your journey to develop a godlike character.